properly admonish the servant of this lady, and leave your angel at a bed midnight still. Father's been friends, babies, and old women, either past or not alive, to pick and pick pieces. For who is he whose chin is but enriched with one appearing hair that will not follow? These fools and twice drawn cavaliers to France work, work your thoughts, and therein see a solution. Behold the ordinance on their carriages, with fatal mouths gaping on green and pocket. Suppose the ambassador from the French comes back, tells Harry that the king doth offer him to capture his daughter and with her to dowry some petty and unprofitable details. The offer likes not, and the nimble gutter with Linstock now the devilish hand touches, alarm and chamber still, and now knows all the her, still be kind, and eat out all performance with your eye. Right, this is ninth grade, and we are beginning chapter three with uh, the A period, and um, this is actually recorded earlier uh, from another class, but I'm going to re-record it. Uh, there's a lot here we can't go into, but basically, what, what does the uh, what does the course always ask the audience to do? Like be mindful of the performance. Like, yeah, yeah. Kind of do this kind of be like it's not like it's just like. Have right. an open mind. Yeah. Right. Have to so it's almost an apology. That uh, it's a big story. It's a small stage. Um, and and you're right. He's asking us to use our imagination. There is some information here that's important. The army is now in France, uh, and it, on page uh, 85 at line 30. Uh, the king of France did get back with Exeter. Remember, he said, I'll let you know uh, what, what I'm going to do. Remember, Exeter told the king of France, Henry wants your crown. And he said, let me think about it. Well, he got back with him. And we get that in line 30, 31. And there are three things that he offers Henry. Do you know what they are? Look, on, look at uh, line 30. Reread it and see if you can figure it out. Line 30. Page 85. His daughter. His, his daughter. Um, uh, of course, in marriage. And that's Catherine. Uh, so you can have my daughter. That's one thing. What else? A dowry. Is the one that's like the stuff you give the guy. That, married that's married. right. Money. The, the father of like, the bride usually gives that money yeah, to so the king. Um, like All right, so give him some land. So a, a, a daughter, a wife, uh, money, and land. But, but there, it says unprofitable dukedoms. They're, they're just small tracts of land. Um, did you know today that uh, President Zelensky of Ukraine is going to uh, address the Congress of the United States via Zoom? He's still in Kiev. Um, and he's, he's, I think, making, he's making overtures uh, to, um, to Putin by one of the things he he's already said is that we do not want to be part of um, of NATO. Uh, that was one of Putin's apparently concerns, uh, and so he's going to make some sort of overtures. Um, what is it? Uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? Uh, he's going concessions, things that maybe a week ago, two weeks ago, he wouldn't have have granted him because they want the fighting to stop. That's what you do in war. You got it comes to a point like in where we are in the book that you start negotiating a lot of politics involved so you can avoid war or end war. So I uh, don't know if that'll fly. I've heard that the Russian army is in, is not very good. That not as good as everybody thought they would would be. Um, the morale is low. Um, so there may be reasons why Putin would accept that, even though it looks like he's crushing them. Uh, it, it's cost him a lot of men, um, a lot of prestige. If anybody liked him beforehand, they don't anymore. I'm talking about Putin. Um, so it's just interesting. That kind of stuff it, it accompanies war. That's what we're seeing here. It's not just shooting. It's a lot of talking, a lot of negotiating. He's got the upper hand. Uh, maybe I can give him something so we can prevent this or whatever in this. Um, so that's what's going on now. I saw uh, Zelensky was talking, and then he made a joke to Putin because Putin was saying that he was he wasn't hiding away, and he was oh, actually yeah. there. But his mic, he like put his hand through his mic, and you could see it. And then Zelensky made a joke about that, and then it went viral, and it was very funny. 
Yeah, if somebody has told me that. Um, um, anyway, that's what you do in war. And and what is what was Henry's reaction? This is this is question number thirty-one. That's the compromise. What is Henry's response? Um, he gives his daughter. Not Henry's response. Oh, Henry. Oh. He, he's got a wife out of this. He's got uh, some land. He's got some money. Oh, he doesn't like it. Well, how do you know he doesn't like it? It says, like, um, the offer likes not, and the nimble gunner with Woodstock, now the devilish cannon touches, alarm and changes the law. So right. it's like foreshadowing. Yeah, it's almost like his answer was, you wanted my answer, and then they, they uh, shoot off a cannon. That's my answer. <laughs> Supposedly at the Alamo, when Santa Ana um, offered to let the uh, people in the Alamo, the mission, leave, um, he gave him the request, and the answer was a, a cannon shot. You know, he didn't say yes, he didn't say no, he just fired the cannon. Um, that was his answer. Um, so that's kind of what we have here. All right, so scene one. This is the second most famous speech in the play. This, the Crispin, St. Crispin's Day speech is the most famous, and maybe his most famous of all, most popular of all. Uh, there's a lot of, lot of competition there, but one of the most popular speeches is St. Crispin. This is probably next to that in the play. It's, I, I call it the once more into the breach speech. Um, he and his army are besieging, and the word siege, S-E, what is a siege? It's like a capture, or not a capture, like a taking of a town. Like How do you, in a particular way to take a town. You don't yeah. it right, you surround it, you shut it down, you cut it off. It's exactly what we're seeing in the news. That's what he's doing to Kiev. That's what Putin is doing. Uh, he's really besieging this city, pounding it, surrounding it, and um, uh, that's, you know, that's what Henry is doing. At the same time, he's making efforts to enter it. This is a walled city. It's called Harfleur. It's near uh, Calais. Calais. Calais is the closest port to Dover, which is the direction they, they came. Uh, I think it's the closest point between the two countries. It's Dover and Calais. If you want to get there the shortest distance, you would go that, that route. And so they are at Harfleur, which is near Calais, and they are besieging it and trying, but at the same time trying to, to get in, yes. So how, is Dover a big port? Because I know it's known for its cliffs. Like yes, I've Dover never seen it. Like um, the yeah, like it's, there's, there's got to be a port place. there, yeah, okay. somewhere. Yeah, that you think you see that, but it's, yeah. All right, so um, Henry is now trying to rally his men, and he says once more into the breach, Henry's going to read it. What is a breach, B-R-E-A-C-H? Oh, it means to like, um, like, it, it says a gap made by a cannon or right. by the walls, but it's pretty much like their towers or like kind of barrier, but uh, they're kind of wall-like things and then a cannon in between each so they can then like fire at the walls of the city to break them. But the breach is, is the break, the breach is the hole they're trying to punch into that wall. Turn the, turn the, well, let's see, well, um, I think uh, yeah, ninety-four. That's a that's a picture of um, a cannon emplacements um, focusing at a wall to kind of knock it down. Remember, gunpowder. There is gunpowder, but I don't think they've developed exploding shells. They haven't developed at least for the battlefield uh, of weapons like pistols and rifles. We're talking about fourteen, fifteen, but, but they, they do have. have like, that shot the cannonball. That's right. Which didn't is have anything like exploded anything. Right. That the cannonball would be literally a solid ball that would knock something down, like a catapult. Yeah. Um, so anyway, Henry is they're they're making these breaches, but they are failing to be able to penetrate the walls to get their men in. Um, and so here's Henry rallying his men. Once more unto the breach, dear friends, once more or close the wall up with our English dead. In peace, there's nothing so becomes a man as modest stillness and humility. But when the blast of war blows in our ears, then imminent the action of the tiger, stiffen the sinews, summon up the blood, disguise fair nature with hard-favored rage, then lend the ear a terrible aspect. Let it cry through the portage of the head like a brass, like a brass, 
shall overwhelm it and as fearfully as doth a gallant rock. <coughs> Overhang and jutty his confounded base, swills with the wild and wasteful ocean. Now set the teeth and stretch them nostril wide, holds hard the breath and bends up every spirit to its full height. On, on, you noblest English, whose blood is fet from fathers of war proof, fathers that, like so many Alexanders, have in the past from morn till even fought, and sheathed their, their swords for lack of argument, dishonor not your mothers. Now attest that those whom you called fathers did beg at you, did beget you. Be copied now to men of grosser blood, and teach them how to war. And you, good yeomen, whose limbs were made in England, show us here the metal of your presence. Let us swear that you are not worth your reading, which I doubt not, for there is none of you so mean and base that hath no nobler luster in your eyes. I see you stand like greyhounds in the slips, straining upon the start, the gains afoot. Follow your spirit, and upon this charge, cry, God for Harry, England, and St. George. Pretty pretty rousing speech. Let's look at two, two aspects of before we go. One would be the first uh, six or seven lines, once more into the breach, and so forth. And we'll look at the last line. That's probably all we get to here. So why do you think that's so effective? Once more into the breach, unto the breach, dear friends. Once more, I'll close the wall up with our English debt. In peace, there's nothing so becomes a man as modest stillness and humility. But when the blast of war blows in our ears, then imitate the action of the tiger. Yes. It's saying pretty much like a gentleman will be like um, modest, humble, and like gracious in times of peace. But when the war's start they are brave and noble and even like violent and go into it with you know yeah i cannot remember the work. student but we had a student a couple years ago she was really tall um maybe maybe some volleyball ladies will remember she was all all everything um she graduated maybe two years ago was it cassie no because the, well, there's one girl that went to the air force yeah no not her um but anyway, she was the quietest student that I taught. And she even wrote really tiny. I don't know why there's a connection between that, but you know, like it was really hard to see, it was really hard to hear, but when I could read it and hear it, she was really good. But they said on the volleyball court, she was a different person. She was, she was fierce on the volleyball court. Gentle, reserved, modest in, in the classroom but a, a very fierce, aggressive competitor on the volleyball. That's the picture you're talking about. That that's, that's when, when you have to, you, but you don't make it up. You, you're not, that's not your lifestyle. You do it because you have to. You have to be fierce. You have to be um, like that. But look at the very end. As, they lead, as he leads the charge, you know, this is the rallying cry. Cry, God for Harry. Who's Harry? King Harry. Who's King Harry? No, Who's king of England. Who's which king of England? The current king of England. The current, the current king of England. So Henry V is Harry. It's the nickname for Harry. How? I don't know where how usually comes from. Is I've never really known a how, but that's also a nickname in this book or in the previous book for for Henry. So how, Henry, Harry are all nicknames. Do you remember um, Charles? I mean Charlemagne. He had Charles. He had. Uh, uh, remember Marcillian? He had Marcel. So, just nicknames, I guess. Uh, of course, for England, God for Harry England, and who in the world is Saint George? King George. Saint George. Right, but some kings. England. Oh, there've been, there been some kings. All right. You ever heard of him? No. I just yeah. read it. Oh, England's yeah. England's patron. Who is who is um who is Scott? Uh, I'm sorry. Who is Ireland's patron? Saint Peter. No, no, Saint Patrick. Patrick. Of course, St. Patrick's Day is tomorrow. Who do you have any idea who uh, Scotland's patron saint? Wait, I know this. The lucky charm. Oh, oh, like <laughs> That's a cartoon oh, character. Saint Scotty. No, like, wait, sorry, Saint. Scotland's patron saint. You can't pinch me. You're Irish. You can't pinch me. I'm Irish. That's a rule. 
Does anybody, anybody, anybody know? Anybody know who Scotland's patron saint is? Right, John. It's if you're if you're a golfer, you would probably know one of the famous golf courses in the world is St Andrews. Oh shoot, I know. St Andrew uh, is it their patron saint. Um, do you know? Um, and, and we, I don't have time to show this to you, but I will show it to you. Have you seen that? Can you picture what a the Union Jack, the British flag, looks yes. like? You know, it consists of three uh, superimposed crosses. There are three crosses on the the Union Jack, um, one on top of the other. One goes this way, one goes this way, and another one goes this way. So there are two that cross this way and one that goes up and down. Uh, that one that goes up and down, white flag with a red cross, that's the cross of St. Uh, of St. George. So we will continue this tomorrow. Um, don't forget our quiz.